Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for Sunday morning, September 9th, 2018. As I promised last night, I would start off talking about Hurricane Olivia now entering the Central Pacific area of responsibility. It moved from the National Hurricane Center based in Miami to the National Weather Service offices in Honolulu, their area of responsibility for the Central Pacific region. And here we have this infrared colorized satellite animation. The old floater, this one's still active on the Worldwide Tropical Cyclone Floaters page that's still got some of the uh, legacy floaters, I guess, if you remember those. This is the one that I really like. I like what Tropical Tidbits has done, of course, and Weather Nerds and others, but it's nice to see the old legacy look to the floater. And that being said, you can tell Olivia suffering from probably cooler ocean temperatures and just a lower overall thermodynamic energy source and as such the convection is starting to really wane away and uh, there's no reds in here which is good uh, and the central dense overcast in here looks kind of disheveled a little ragged so that's all good news in terms of the wind aspect of this but that being said the rain could still be a big issue of course Fl uh, Florence will get there Olivia located still well to the east northeast of the big island of Hawaii and forecast to track west and then lose more organization dipping to the southwest coming across the Hawaiian island chain early next week and we're gonna have to just wait and see honestly how much of this circulation remains intact as this continues to move on when I do the update on this tomorrow in the morning we'll take a look at sea surface temperatures in the region and get a better analysis on what's going on but right now still a few days away no watches or warnings for any of the Hawaiian islands all right now I want to switch gears and let's take a look at Isaac basically I'm gonna go from the least complicated to the most here uh, and so if you're watching on YouTube and you want to skip ahead to Florence I understand that is just fine so uh, Isaac this morning 50 mile per hour wind and it is still moving generally west at nine miles per hour pressure 1001 millibars this is what the track for Isaac looks like over the next few days uh, straight west into the eastern Caribbean splitting right through the windward and leeward islands here north of Barbados and so definitely pay attention hurricane conditions possible and we will just have to see where this ends up most of the modeling sort of dissipates Isaac in this region which is very unusual to see if it was a tropical storm moving through this area you remember Harvey of course you do it died out in the Eastern Caribbean came back in the Western Caribbean and especially the Gulf as you remember but it is quite unusual to see a developed hurricane you know we're not talking about something that's racing along at 25 knots and what have you uh, so we'll keep an eye on this to see is there something left after this point in time that takes aim on Jamaica maybe the Caymans we'll just have to wait and see I'm not seeing too strong a signal of it now for what it's worth all right so looking at Florence the latest on Florence uh, first of all look at that map that's that's amazing especially in a year uh, and I'll stop harping on this soon I promise where this area was deemed so unfavorable and look two tropical cyclones right in the main development region again it just goes to show we have a long way to go still to understand all the processes that are involved in creating tropical cyclones maintaining them etc uh, as of the 5 a.m. Eastern Time advisory package we will get these advisories every six hours until there are watches posted and that's going to still be a couple of days away probably so 5 a.m. 11 a.m. 5 p.m. 11 p.m. Eastern Time or Atlantic Standard Time that's when these advisories come out so as of 5 a.m. Uh, it was still moving generally west six miles per hour winds are 70 but I did see and I'll show you this in a moment what we call the ATCF uh, it's an automatic tracking um, 
internal kind of thing within the computer systems of the weather service and different um, entities, universities, whatever, they're all the, the indications are there that this is a hurricane. It's called the best track file. And regardless, this is going to be a hurricane, and it is going to be a very powerful hurricane at that. The center, the core, forecast to make landfall somewhere between Wilmington, North Carolina, and maybe Jacksonville or Moorhead City or something like that. That's the core, and we have to really understand this is going to be more than just about the center, the eye. That's what this forecast is for, and that's what the cone is for it, that that the center should be inside the cone most of the time this doesn't tell you about the storm surge or the wind or the rain the little orange circle here tells you about the wind field and we'll look at that in more detail over the next few days but this is the latest thinking the guidance really starting to cluster together tighten up that a landfall in North Carolina can't rule out South Carolina completely just yet, and you can't rule out Southeast Virginia completely just yet, but a landfall in North Carolina seems highly likely at this point. Florida and Georgia, I would say the odds of this coming your way are less than 5%, my opinion, uh, and it's probably even closer to zero, to be honest with you. The uh, Let's see, we already looked at this. There we go. Satellite imagery, it does look like it's getting better organized. So probably by the 11 a.m. time frame, I'm recording this, as you can see down here, at 10 o'clock Eastern time, right? Yep, 10.01. Uh, this will be a hurricane, Hurricane Florence. And notice, I mean, this is remarkable. You can see the outline of the ridging here. You know, I'm just kind of drawing it in. All the energy that would take Florence away is blocked to the north. It's not able to come down. Look at this trough out here. Hardly any progress to the south and east, and therefore Florence is going to have a pretty clear shot to make landfall here, most likely in the Carolinas, with North Carolina being the most likely location. Here is Isaac, still trying to get its act together in a you know marginally favorable area of the deep tropics. Uh, and then it's going to move generally west here. So you folks in Barbados and elsewhere, please keep an eye on this. I will talk about it regularly, especially as it closes in. Not to worry, even when I'm working the Florence mission, which is going to start tomorrow more than likely, I'll be on top of this a couple of times per day. I'll talk about that at the end here. So I want to show you Isaac, the modeling, uh, fairly tightly clustered. And that, again, is good because you want to see a confident forecast. You don't want to see a forecast where they keep saying the confidence in the forecast is lower than normal. That's not good. This kind of a tightly clustered envelope of models is a good sign that the forecast can be thought of as being reliable. Okay? It's not good because it's aimed at you, obviously, but this gives you confidence. All right? That way you're not, you know, well, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, it, it's just this is good. Uh, in terms of the confidence. The uh, GFS ensembles, generally speaking, they're a little bit north, which is interesting, of the rest of the guidance. So we'll have to see how that plays out. And then overall, it looks like they kill this thing off by the Western Caribbean. Interesting to see that. And the potential for Isaac to really strengthen uh, the H Wharf Hurricane Weather Research Forecast Model and some of the other modeling indicating robust strengthening. But I think those are outliers. They certainly look like it. See, they, they lie outside of the rest of the envelope for intensity guidance. So we call them outliers, right? That's a great name. And mostly Category 1. So hopefully that's all we will see from Isaac. I say all in air quotes over here. Uh, a hurricane is a hurricane, but obviously the stronger it is, especially in the deep tropics, the more problems you have. That goes without saying. So we'll monitor this too as well, of course. This is one of those times where when you see the tightening of the envelope <clears throat> and less spread, I say it's good in the confidence, but it's definitely bad 
because this is showing us, I think, what's going to happen here. And let's just click on this. I don't know if it'll let me. Let's zoom in on it. It will let me do that. Um, and we click on it again so it'll animate. Yep. So Ben Knoll tweeting that the latest ECMWF ensemble tracks, and uh, I believe that the black line is the ensemble mean, hone in on a most likely landfall over South Carolina. And I know that's interesting. It's like, well, Mark, you were saying it's mostly North Carolina. Well, remember, the European is just part of the overall package. Okay, there's it, it weighs in on what's called the consensus, where you have all the models, and then you get a consensus from there, and that's all determined by some pretty fancy computer work, and then it's interpreted by the men and women at the National Hurricane Center. But uh, you can see how there... It was spread out. We'll start at the beginning. It's spread, tightening, tightening further. And most of the ensemble members there, those red lines indicating a landfall in uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, something like that. I was hoping that I could, let's see if I can click on this and make it, uh, yeah, there we go. That's what I was trying to do. But it still won't let me click on the uh, the GIF animation. You can on other stuff, still images, whatever. That's the latest run. That's the run from yesterday, and there's the latest. I'll freeze that. And you can see if I draw the outline of most of the ensemble members there, there you go. And the center point, yes, Myrtle Beach area, of this particular run of the European. You still have to weigh in other modeling the H wharf is farther north yeah farther north uh, GFS farther north than that and then the UK met last night was basically a miss if you will for a direct hit of the core so all of that goes into this and you get the forecast okay so we just analyze these things to give us an idea and you look at trends and the trend unfortunately has been that uh, as you can see here, two runs ago, one run ago, the latest run. Again, reiterating spread, tighter, tightest. So I think North Carolina goes without saying you need to be ready. And here the uh, different models, some of these are your consensus models. This is, for example, the AEMI is the GFS ensemble mean or the average, just to give you an example. And then some of these are your simpler uh, least skill models but even those um, some of them are honing in on North Carolina so it is interesting that the European brings this up towards Myrtle Beach with the ensemble mean the average but the rest of the guidance the American generated model guidance <coughs> excuse me uh, North Carolina intensity wise oh, I'm sorry this is the GFS ensembles just wanted to show you this you know ensembles 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 it really does help and we have a lot more uh, tightly clustered ensemble guidance aimed at the North Carolina coast. And then inland, yep, this could be a problem. Just It just depends on where it ends up. And we still have a few days because I'm going to focus on the coast first, and then we will talk about inland impacts. It's almost time to talk about, about impacts. I think that's going to happen tomorrow uh, where I can tell you more about what to expect, and I will really put my geography hat. I'm a physical geographer by trade that's what I have a degree in is geography but my emphasis of course was on meteorology climatology statistics and hurricanes and uh, and that's the thing I don't know if you know that but when you study a certain discipline you can focus on a certain area you know like if you're a doctor you could be uh, a neurologist and then in the case of being a geographer I focused on hurricanes so I'm like a hurricane geographer I'm not technically a degreed meteorologist and that being said, I do know the land areas and I know about the impacts and that's what is most important. That's what is most important for you folks. Especially when you see this. Some of the modeling indicating close to category five intensity and then it starts to come down as it gets closer to the coast. But the immense storm surge that this will put into motion will already already be there. The enormous waves that are coming, it is not going to be uh, there's no way out on this one unless it just recurves, period. It's not going to just suddenly weaken. You're not going to have one of those, well, it fizzled out and we don't know why. 
There's no hurricane that passed by before that's churned up the water. And I'm being honest with you, okay? It, it is time to begin the preparations in earnest along the Carolina coast. You know, from Georgetown, South Carolina, and I'll include Southeast Virginia, honestly, to Norfolk. Really start preparing today. You know, take it a step up. Uh, but still, try to remain calm, okay? This is going to be stressful. I know it's stressful for me. I'm in Wilmington. I've got five kids at home, two in college. My wife, she works at a hospital. You think she's going to just be, oh, honey, you don't have to work? No problem. Uh uh-uh, they're going to have lockdown. She works in the emergency department. And, and I know you're like, oh, poor Mark. Believe me, it comes with the territory. I know. I'm in the boat with you this time. Um, so real quick, just want to mention, follow me on Twitter. I've seen the count going up. And it doesn't boost my ego. It boosts my ability to be able to communicate with you uh, at any time. You know, just a tweet here or there and just try to post something useful for you. Uh, and then, of course, I am on Patreon right there. A really wonderful way to support what I do financially while also getting sort of an inside look at things. There are some benefits that come along with it. And if you want to be a supporter via Patreon, uh, hey, I need all the help I can get. This is an expensive endeavor, especially after Hawaii with Lane and then Gordon on the Gulf Coast. Both of those basically, I don't want to call them strikeouts, but now is when it's going to really matter with this uh, Florence situation. So, And then lastly, just want to mention we do have an app. It's on the App Store. We don't have an Android app anymore. I got rid of it. It was too hard to keep maintained. My apologies. We did everything we could. Please don't ask about it because there's nothing I could do. It's just beyond my capability. And I threw my hands up after throwing several thousand dollars at it, and I couldn't get it to work the way I wanted it to. And I'm not going to sell a defective app. The iOS version, however, is the best that it has ever been. And if you have an iPhone or an iPad, it's not made for iPad, but it'll work on an iPad, go to the App Store, search for Hurricane impact i'll talk more about it later i mean it's my business i have to uh but it's also a great way for you to stay in touch with what we're doing i'm trying to provide a service i can't do it for free right i don't work somewhere else and then do this as a hobby so please understand that all right and i really appreciate the support that's been coming in thank you all it's making a difference okay the business part out of the way i hate talking about that i wish i could win the lottery don't we all but I would do all of this for free if I could. I will have another update later this afternoon or early this evening after we take a look at the afternoon version of the morning models. I know that's confusing. The models are initialized in the morning. The solutions come out in the afternoon. I'll take a look at them around the 5 o'clock advisory time, Eastern time. Okie dokes. Have a good rest of your Sunday. I'll be back with you in a few hours. I am Mark Zadath, HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. I'll talk to you between 5 and 6 p.m. Eastern Time.